Hey Translator, so today I have an interesting one for you. Today, okay, let me get into it. So first of all, I imagine lately you've noticed, as I've noticed, that we have quite a few new competitors coming in. And uh, what I mean by this is like if I apply for a job and before maybe there were, say, I don't know, 10 or 12 people total applying for a job, now there will be over 100. And it really depends on some of the situations, but I've noticed a, a huge proliferation. There are a lot more people who are coming online and deciding to try their hand at freelance translation, I guess. And it makes sense. They're stuck at home and they're trying to figure out what to do. Maybe they study another language, maybe they speak another language, and they say, hey, I could try to be a freelance translator. And so they start going online and start applying for jobs. And unfortunately for us as freelance translators, this can be a bit iffy. Now look, I'm all about people trying to become new freelance translators. That's what this whole channel is about pretty much. And you know, the book and the course and everything is to help new people come up as freelance translators, but it's for people who are serious about it and want to do something serious, not people who are just dipping their toes in the water. Because what happens when you have a bunch of people saying, I could translate too, I can translate too, I could translate too, it creates all this noise. And so our noise gets drowned out when we're trying to talk to the client and try to get their attention and try to get their jobs. So there's been a lot of this going on. And so it's become a question of trying to separate the good from the bad. And so how do you do this? Well, there are various ways you can do this. You can have a portfolio, you can have uh, reviews and ratings. Again, this is the bulk of what I talk about in these videos and in my course and all that good stuff. But unfortunately, I think it's still happening and it's still kind of difficult to have to deal with all these people because at this point, creating a portfolio can be quite easy for a lot of people. And I see a lot of, you know, a lot of people might have done translation in class or in something like that, and they can copy and paste whatever they did and put it into their portfolio. Unfortunately, dealing with, a, with freelance translation, even if you're good at translation, that's just half of the equation, right? You have the freelance part. And from the point of view as an agency, this can be a real headache because for a lot of freelance agencies, when they hire someone, they want to hire someone they can work with. They want to hire someone who knows about deadlines, who knows how to motivate themselves and work by themselves, who will be clear and concise, who can communicate and who can let them know like if things fall behind or anything like that because a lot of people who have been working in an office all their lives and are used to having the boss breathing down their back, they're not used to that, to pacing themselves, to actually voluntarily telling the client, oh, I might not make it on time, or I might have an issue with this or that, to uh, trying to maintain their own schedule and keep on top of it, to being able to communicate well with the client and uh, let them know what needs to be done, trying to anticipate what the client needs and stuff like that. And this can be an issue uh, for a lot of clients and agencies who deal with freelance translators and also with a lot of freelance translators when they're first getting started. So obviously, that's a lot of what I do. Once again, I try to help people out and all that. But I think something is needed in terms of trying to, once again, separate the good from the bad in that sense. Now, a lot of people can take a translation test, and there are a lot of places where you can learn. If you do French to English translations, there are a lot of places you can go where you say, I speak French, I can translate into English, let's take this test and prove it. Or you can take classes to learn how to be better at translating French into English. But there are very few places where you can do actually concentrating on the freelance part. Now, once again, the stuff I offer is places where you can learn more about it, but how can you prove that you've learned more about it? That's what I'm trying to do with this. This whole roundabout thing that I've been talking about is kind of what I'm trying to prove, what I'm trying to show, and what I'm trying to do. And that's this thing I've been working on. You'll notice that lately I've been working on a lot of these other projects that probably will never make me any money. Well, that's what happens when you're stuck here with not much work going on and uh, you can't leave the house. But anyway, this is the thing I'm working on. I'm not working on it by myself. I'm working with another guy. I won't say his name because he hasn't said I could say his name, although he hasn't said I couldn't, but I'll play it safe for now. Anyway, we're, we're working on this thing, and it's basically a test that you take to show that you know about the freelance world, the freelance part of freelance translation, that, uh, that you know about this. It's a test. So what it is now, it's a test, very short. It's I'm varying between 12 questions or 15 questions. But anyway, one third of the questions deal with industry knowledge, another third deal with ethics, and another third with attention to detail. So industry knowledge is like you would think what it is. Attention to detail also. Ethics means ethics in terms of having to do business for yourself and making sure that you have the right types of ethics in terms of communication with the client and with the agency and this, that, or whatever it might be. And look, if you've followed 
these videos and or and or taking my course or reading my book or have been in the industry for a bit, then it's stuff you should know at this point. Having said that, the test is not easy. The goal here is to have fewer than half the people actually pass the test because if this happens, then it's a better way to test who's actually good and who's actually not. And the idea here would be because once you take the test, you get the certificate. And this certificate, then you could put it on your profile. Or you could say, I have this certificate. When you take the test, then you can't take it for another seven days. I might change that for now since I'm sharing it with you guys. Maybe I'll just make it one day and uh, so you can try it and see what you think about it. But uh, the idea is, because I don't want people just taking it over and over and over again, because then you'll get it right just by chance. So I will link to the test. Uh, there'll be a link down here in the description below. Please feel free to check it out. And uh, feel free to let me know any feedback you might have and what you think, what do you think, A, this is a good idea, B, if the test works for you and, uh, and, and how that goes. So for now, feel free to take it if you want. If you don't pass, it's, it's fine. You can wait a day and then take it again and, uh, or a week. It, it will be a week. Maybe I'll change it into a day for now for this week or so just so you guys can, uh, can take a look more than once if you want to. But uh, yeah, and any feedback is really appreciated in terms of how the test is structured and also whether you think this test could be useful to separate the translators who know what they're doing from all these people who don't know what they're doing. By the way, if you don't know what you're doing, this is a great opportunity to learn to do it and then later on maybe try to take the test again and show that you know what, what you're doing. And that's the thing, the test should be a great way of testing whether you know what you're doing or not. And that's what we're trying to do with this test and we're trying to create something that with real knowledge that can really help you out and not just like the theory or a specific language combination that a 200 word test can do which is what the translation agencies do anyway and hopefully something like this could help out because then when translation agencies see okay this person has that certified test okay that means that they know what they're doing and we can sort of trust them and uh, I think it's a good quick way to get out of the way the fact that they know the freelance translation business and um, and you know they kind of know how this works. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Please feel free to take a look. Please feel free to let me know any questions, comments, constructive criticisms you might have. At this point it's very much being set up. You will get a certificate if you pass so, which feel free to keep and use. And uh, I'll let you know as things go on what changes might come up or how that might, might go. But, uh, but yeah, that's the idea and that's the thought of this so far. And, uh, and I'm very curious to hear what other people think about it, what you think about it, and how you feel. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye. Sabedum.